Hello, hello, and good morning, everyone. Today is my favorite day of the year, Share the Mic and Cyber Day. My name is Beatrice Detangel, coming in live from San Francisco. We're here to talk about the importance of allyship and action. A real quick intro for me, or to me, uh, I'm the senior, senior cybersecurity product marketing manager at PayPal. When I'm not working, I'm volunteering for causes near and dear to my heart, like Share the Mic and Cyber. And now, let me share the mic and meet some of our panelists. I'm going to kick it off to Christina to start us off. Hi, good morning or good afternoon. Happy Friday, uh, Beatrice and everybody out there. I am Christina Murillo and I am, by day, I am a principal security consultant at a boutique cybersecurity firm. By night, I do all the things and I am super excited to be here. Um, guess we could pass it off to Stephanie. Hello, hello. My name is Stephanie A.K. Schilling and I am a senior cyber consultant, consultant with EY. Um, I love the by day, by night. Um, I'm really passionate about being outdoors. I was raised with that's just that love. And I do a bunch of rock climbing, skiing, and hiking. And so very excited to be here on what is, I think, a lot of our favorite day of the year. Hello, and I'm Tatiana Bolton. I'm the security policy manager at Google. Um, I, by day, I do cybersecurity policy, various uh, issues like connected device security, IoT, uh, and cyber workforce. And uh, by night, uh, I take care of my four adorable children uh, and do stuff like share the mic and cyber and um, and and work on other uh, issues around the cyber workforce. So, so happy to be here. Thanks for having me. And thank you, folks, for taking the time today. Uh, let's kick things off with a fun question. It's Friday near lunchtime, depending on where you are. I said morning, folks might be in the East Coast now. And I, I'm hungry. I hope everyone else is getting hungry. Uh, what is your favorite breakfast or lunch dish, depending on where you are? And I'll start first. My favorite is champarado. I'm Filipino. Champarado is a breakfast dish uh, in the Philippines, but I know there's different types of, and different iterations all over the world, and I can't wait to try them all. Uh, and who else wants to share their favorite dish? That sounds delicious. I'm a huge fan of uh, gumbo. I could eat that literally all day. I honestly just want to go back to New Orleans so that I can like just have gumbo breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I love that. My um my mom is German. I was actually born in Heidelberg and um Kartoffelpuffel. So like um potato pancakes are just one of the best things ever. Though for lunch the other day I did just have chocolate chip cookies. That's <laughs> Cookies for lunch, breakfast, gumbo for all day. And Christina, what, what's your go-to meal? Well, I'm more of like, I love breakfast and lunch, So, but I'm going to go with a brunch. And my favorite brunch uh, would probably be Eggs Benedict with more than one glass of mimosa. But now that Stephanie mentioned like Germany, I have family in Germany, and I fell in love with curry verst, I think it's called. So amazing. So yeah, I'm going to throw so that good. in. 
I just also have to add pickles. Originally, I was born in Russia. So like, I'm just, you know, like I'm a big fan. <laughs> it was great with potatoes. All right, now I know what to bring for the breakfast, for our next breakfast uh, in person. Pickles, currywurst, gumbo. I think we're all set. Mm -hmm. um, all right, well, if I'm hungry, but I'm also hungry to hear what everyone else is thinking and feeling about Share the Mic and Cyber Day. Let's start off with more of a baseline question. We're in a fifth iteration, but I wanna know more. Why are we here? Why does Share the Mic and Cyber exist? And why are you participating in it today? And go, go on ahead and unmute when you're ready. Um, I think that Share the Mic and Cyber is really, really important when we look at, I feel like anti-Black sentiment is unfortunately across the world um, and that we have absorb these messages that are just seeped into our air about who is supposed to be what, who is good, who is bad, who is smart, what is who, like what is for whom. Um, and I know that I, I particularly, as well as I feel like a lot of my other um, colleagues of color have been discouraged because we're not supposed to be in tech, we're not supposed to be in cyber, um, not only as a black person, but also as a black woman. And that's a very one harmful um, message to send out. And two, we also need as many cyber practitioners as we can get when you're pulling from such a small pool. Um, it's really hard because we all know about this massive talent chasm, chasm that we have and figuring out how we can recruit more diverse voices to help keep the world a safer place. I think one of the well, biggest well, things is that, you know, we always talk about representation and that many people, can't be what they cannot see. And I think one of the most important things about Share the Mic and Cyber is that representation, right? A lot of times we see our white colleagues and counterparts um, pretty much getting all the opportunities, whether it's speaking, you know, leadership opportunities. And it's not because they work less, you know, they do work hard. But I think the, the way that we're represented here is that, you know, you're always going to default to white or at least white passing and black is always secondary, you know, third, fourth, whatever. Uh, so we're always kind of othered and pushed to the side. And I think this day reinforces that, you know, we are here, we are well represented, we are doing amazing work in the industry, we are innovating, we are leading, we are um, flipping the tables upside down, you know, not only, you know, sitting at the table, and we're doing a lot of impactful and amazing work and that we belong here. And I think that's that's why we're here because I think it's a message that needs to be uh, shared multiple times. It's not a one-stop shop thing. Um, and I think that's the importance of today. I'm super excited about today, by the way, so. And it's going super great. I feel like I'm seeing all kinds of stuff online. Um, and I just, I completely agree with Stephanie and Christina. Um, I think it's, um, I think it's a shame how stereotypes and, um, and just perceptions around race uh, shape the way that cybersecurity is done. And it ends up that we have fewer practitioners generally and fewer practitioners with, with backgrounds that can help protect our nation. So, it, you know, we're in the national security space. So we should be most concerned about uh, making sure that we have the best protection possible. We can't do that without diverse voices. If you have, if you have a, a monolithic workforce that thinks the same way, that was trained the same way, that was in the same institutions and colleges and, and high schools, it the the it, it's not so much the you know the race that impacts. Uh, decision making, but it's also just the backgrounds, the like the variety of backgrounds that are missing, and the and the different problem solving techniques, um, people who speak different languages, right? So you know all of that's missing, and I think and obviously like studies have shown this over and over, Black women are affected by this more than any more than anyone else, and it's um, and that's why I participate and share the mic. I you know I love Camille and Lauren and Caitlin who have done so much work around getting this uh, into such a successful force in our community. Um, so I love to, I would do anything for them. Uh, but I, I think that it's just a, like just a really successful, uh, program. And I just want to see more of it. I think it starts a lot of great conversations. And if you see like the pictures that are out there now, right? Like to your point about representation, uh, or seeing, you know, not being what you can't see, look at now what, who represents cyber. 
Jen Easterly and uh, Camille is at, you know, as at the National Cyber Director's Office. And you see these people now not only participating, but also as leaders. And I, I love that. Tatiana, you reminded me of I, um, I, I went to an FBI diversity recruitment event um, before the pandemic and the head of the Cleveland office said something fascinating. Uh, he said that the lack of diversity is one of the greatest deaths that, that the FBI is facing today because how are we supposed to, to, to protect the American people when we don't look like the American people? And I think it goes exactly to what you're saying when you're looking at um, the diversity of thought and experiences and how we can collaborate to truly make the world a safer place. And Steph, let's uh, let's keep you on the mic for a little bit more. Uh, pr prior to this session, I posted about uh, Jasmine, who unfortunately uh, heard so heard the words, you know, there are no there's no black people in computer science. And I you responded quickly, and I think Jasmine's listening in right now. Let's talk more about what your background is and then um, how important it is to have that visibility to really negate some of those words and sentiments. Yeah, um, the interesting part when we were talking about representation, being able to see yourself, I actually had um, someone else see me in cyber before I could see myself. They saw the work that I was doing. I'm a marketing professional. I spent uh, the first part of my career there and I was helping to open the black box of what IT is and to approve business relationships. Um, across a biomedical manufacturer. And um, this individual approached me and was like, hey, we should talk about cyber. And I'm like, what are you talking about? That's not, that wasn't my chosen role. That's not the path that I saw for myself. And even though up to that point, I had worked with incredibly technical people, people who are doing amazing things for NASA and other federal agencies to help literally push humanity forward in this in, in, in open innovation. Um, I still didn't think of myself as, as a technical person. So I needed someone else to see that in me first. Unfortunately, I also got a lot of pushback. Um, I was actively discouraged from joining the field. I was told I don't want to be in a male dominated field. It is way too technical that I don't have the degrees. Um, and I was told that I should look elsewhere to, to spend my time. Though someone also did tell me, wouldn't you rather spend time in like fashion i was like whoa okay literally never expressed any interest whoa, fascinating what? fascinating <laughs> i was like mm, okay um but i feel like being black and being a black woman your life is about resilience and so i heard a no and i went cool i will make a plan without you and i'll find people who will say yes and who will support me and i figure out what I can do myself. I did the research that why the majority of men in this field do have um, degrees in um, computer science that the majority of women actually do not. We tend to come sideways from other industries. Um, and I think that's really important. And then also this idea that I feel like that we all know the image of, of a hacker who's like in their basement with the dark hoodie. Um, cyber is so much more than just hacking though mad props to my peers who do that um as well as hard uh, like as well as those tech skills you need to be able to talk tech and hang with the tech but i can i can teach you that right there's so much there that that, that we can learn but also we're looking at the governance and the risk and the compliance and the privacy side of cyber is also really important and desperately needed as well it's not about fluency it's about being able to catch what you're hearing and translate it to different audiences stuff i love that uh, and Christina, I saw you on mute. You want to jump in? Yeah, and no, I just wanted to add to what Steph Stephanie was saying. I mean, I came from more of a, a formal background, so I I did come from the IT background, and you know, before it was cybersecurity, I was you know focused on security and, and networking and and all the like gucky, gnarly pulling cables and very tech technical and very tactical. Um, and I I feel like back then, you know, I'm talking about like twenty something years ago. Um, and, and, and continuing on, I never really got pushback from men because, or from my male counterparts, because I they knew that I knew my shit, you know what I mean? And I don't say that as like in a cocky way. I say it as a, you know, when you do your research and you do your, uh, you do your due diligence and you know that you know your stuff, you know, forget about this imposter syndrome stuff, right? Like you need to be confident and you need to remind yourself that you know your stuff 
And it doesn't really matter what they say. And they don't have to accept you either, right? Um, a lot of times I notice that they're just intimidated by you. Uh, but most men are super helpful, right? Like it, it's hard to pu push everybody in one bucket. Uh, but I will say that women are discouraged. We continue to be discouraged. And um, as Stephanie mentioned, it is about resiliency. I don't know if that I, attrib I attribute that to my New York attitude. I do have a New York attitude and I'm just like, get out my way. If you're not going to help me, get out my way, right? And that could be a boss, a mentor, an ally. I don't care who you are. If you're not going to be helpful, then move out the way, right? Um, and I'm okay with that. Not many people are okay with it. And I think that's that's where the representation comes in. Like we need to show more of us and we need to show more of, of the way that we look, whether you're technical or non-technical, that doesn't really matter. We need to show that there are folks who look like Stephanie, who look like Tatiana, who look like you, who look like me, um, and that you can bring uh, a portion of that like authenticity into your work. Uh, but I think that develops over time, right? Um, so, yeah. If you're not helping, you're in the way. That's you're in the way. way. Move, That's move. right. Mm -hmm. Christina, I, I love that. One of my... um one of my mentors when I was first disc discouraged and getting in this field, um, I talked to the only woman that I knew in cyber and her response was be like water. There's going to be people who don't want you there. Be like water and find the places and flow towards those who do, because I guarantee you that they're out there. And I feel like it's just been advice that I have followed in my career and has set me up for a lot of success. Totally. And I also like, I feel like um, the women that I've networked with, <laughs> excuse me, and have like found connections with, like, uh, have been such great, um, su like such great aides to me have, you know, or encouraged me and like, you know, um, really made me feel like I belong and have supported me when, uh, when I was feeling like I, I, you know, I, I should quit or I don't like, I should, I don't deserve a particular like role or, or, um, or shouldn't work on a particular area. Um, and I, it's funny cause I, I have found that, you know, um, my network, uh, includes a lot of women, but it's also a, a lot of great, like male mentors that were eager to, to see me succeed and just understood me as a, as a person. Cause all it is really is like, we only, we just want equal, uh, an equal opportunity to fail or succeed. Right. And so if, if you're given that equal playing field, women, uh, people of color will succeed at the same rate as, uh, as any white man. It's just that often though, that, you know, starting point, the, um, you know, from where we're coming from is, is so much further behind. And so that's the part that's you know, that's, that's hard, you know, that we're trying to kind of get over and why I love, uh, you know, share the mic and cyber and, um, and all of the efforts to like girl security and, you know, all of the like blacks who code, all of the people are, we're trying to bring together uh, networks that make it easier and to uh, sort of make that starting point more fair. You're, we're all removing the gates and the barriers we found when we were trying to break in or pivot into cybersecurity. Uh, I want to add something else, Beatrice, sorry to interrupt you. What I want to say also too, is this is a message to those folks that are kind of gatekeeping um, and that are making it more difficult for people like us and other folks to enter, you know, whether you're uh, identify as a woman, male, non-binary, whatever the case may be to enter this field. Um, and my message is stop it because if you're going to complain about you know, not many people in cybersecurity and that there's a dearth of folks and, and you can't find people to hire, you are part of that problem, right? Um, so change the way you, that, change your perspective and change the way that you approach these things. There are no unicorns in cybersecurity, whether you are on the red team, blue team, purple team, it doesn't really matter what team, uh, technical side, non-technical side, whatever. You're not a unicorn and you're not special. So make way for other folks to come in and to help, right? We need as many hands on deck as possible. And this is no time to start excluding people because of little, you know, inconsequential little things. So, yeah. There's more than enough work to go around. Exactly. Too much. Yeah, too much. <laughs> we need help. We're drowning. Yeah, and it's it's to the point of, you know, stop it. For, that's the first action we're asking for or demanding. Just stop. The second one is I'm seeing a lot of chatter on mentorship. Uh, and I see my 
share the mic and cyber partner, P Patricia, just saying mentorship is key. Um, just around the room, who has been your mentor? And let's share the light on, share the mic with them or share the light for them for a little bit. Who and what have they done to help you succeed and where to where you are today? Um, I can start. I, uh, my, one of my mentors in cyber was Antonio Skurlock. I don't know if anybody knows T, but he is amazing. Um, he was, uh, he was in, he was a leader in, at CISA in the policy, uh, office when I started there. And I would say he wasn't even a mentor because I think mentorship is important, but especially for women and people of color, it doesn't just take mentorship and tell, you know, like giving advice and, and, uh, providing knowledge. It's also about actively being an ally for them, right? Getting them in the right rooms. Uh, supporting them when they provide an idea that's shot down by someone else in the room. They're talked over, right? Um, T did that for me. He put me in the right rooms. He he encouraged me to uh, attend meetings that I thought maybe I shouldn't attend. He, um, he actively uh, helped me find new and different positions. Um, and I think allies like that who go out of their way to, to, sort of encourage you to grow, to find new positions for you. Because I think what like, you know, um, there's a study that came out probably in 2015 that found that like most men have not only mentors, but people who actively pull them up into positions of power. And what women need as well and people of color is that same type of support where it's not, it's not only mentorship, it's like, actively pulling them into positions where uh, where the, the mentor believes they need to be, right? Pointing them to the to the hiring manager, introducing them to people, taking them for drinks, take, you know, kind of showing them around, talking about the politics behind everything. And, um, and I think that's really important. I love that. It's almost not, so in my mind, it's almost like mentorship and sponsorships. I have mentors. I have people that I can call up with questions. Um, Camille and Caitlin Ringrose are um, one of them. Um, but, when, but when I'm thinking about sponsors, when we look at how I got into this field and how people who are helping to tug me along, um, one of my first CISO was and still is a major sponsor of mine where he was like, hey, I see you in cyber. Um, he actually accidentally, I don't know if it's accidentally, he, he, he actively discouraged me, which was really interesting when I first expressed interest, he was like, I don't really know if you want to be in this field. And the beauty of I feel like about allyship and, the, and how we're all on this imperfect journey, he came back a week later and he's like, I messed up. And I'm like, yes, you did. <laughs> and we had a conversation about it and we sat down and we made a plan and he put me in rooms with as executives. Um, and it's interesting the imp impact that's happening with that's happening on my career now because I was recently told at where I currently work that my ability to understand executives and where they're looking from and where their concerns and how it ties into cyber far exceeds that of many of my peers, many who are above me. And so getting those opportunities has made a really big impact in my career. And then people who also push you. Um, I think that Caitlin's on the line. Caitlin reached out and she was like, I don't know if you saw this fellowship from New America and share the mic in cyber. And I went, okay, okay, I'll apply for it. <laughs> It wasn't in my game plan, but you know, our sponsors and our mentors are there looking out for us when they see opportun good opportunities, also throwing them in our way, um, which is really, really important. I feel a little bit differently about mentorship um, and it could be good or bad, but it just works for me. Um, I don't believe in formal mentorship. I believe in organic relationships. So I believe in, you know, developing relationships and like uh, cultivating organic relationships with folks, you know, Camille, Lauren are two folks that come to mind. Um, and just, just kind of being free, being my authentic self, like just sharing like my career goals, what I'm, what I'm thinking about, what their perspective is. It's, so it's more like friendships, right? And they give me advice. I give them advice. Um, so it, it's a give and take. I, I don't, I don't, it, the, the idea of like this formal mentorship and this like rigid thing doesn't really snap for me. Like it doesn't make sense. Um, in terms of sponsorship, you know, I've had 
different multiple sponsors throughout my entire career. I've I've had bosses that have, you know, given me or allowed me to like step into positions that maybe others had uh have doubted would have doubted me on. Um so that's that's enabled me to like push my career forward. But I again, I don't rely on and I and I think it's important, but I don't rely on the formal mentorship or formal sponsorship in terms of like the corporate structure. Um, I like to kind of think about just my network and I like to think about um, rather than seeing folks as like part of my network, I just see them as like folks that I just have really strong relationships with and that I continue to build relationships with. Um, And that I also bring things to them, right? Like whether it's opportunities, whether it's um, helping them with Twitter, I don't know, like, you know, so Again, I, I really like to look at it as as uh, as a relationship. I I don't like that we we tend to kind of throw the cup at like mentorship and sponsorship. We need more. We need more. It's like a book could be your mentor. You know what I'm saying? Like you could be, just try to be a little bit more creative. Don't necessarily rely on someone else to do that work for you. You may have to do the work, and it may look a little bit different, right? It could be your own blog. It could be a podcast. You may have to be your own mentor sometimes, right? Because there may not be someone um, that understands context, that understands where you came from, and that can offer you that direct guidance. So I, 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 I always like to encourage people to think a little bit outside of the box. No, I, 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 go, oh, sorry, go ahead. I would no. I was just gonna say that I completely agree with Christina that like often formal mentorship programs fail just for this reason that mm-hmm. they. Uh, that they force people who don't necessarily even get along personally to be each other's like uh, person. And it doesn't necessarily work that what I, I completely agree that what works better is if you find, you know, your own, um, your own sort of people within the agency or company that you're in or just your friend network. And I think like share the mic is like a really great network to, to, um, to be in. And uh, Kate, I agree that like, I, you know, hats off to Camille and Lauren and Caitlin, who are all good friends of mine. And I, you know, I love them. And they've also been, you know, great uh, mentors to me. Um, I, I think it's sometimes you find people that you just get along with. And I think if you, <clears throat> excuse me, if you just lean into that and just think of all of these, you know, great people that you're meeting through share the mic as, as friends and just build relationships with them. Naturally things just, it just great things happen. You know, um, I, 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 I couldn't agree with, I couldn't agree more, Christina. I think well, we also like, like to look up, like we also like to think, okay, I'm going to, I want the CISO to be my mentor. Well, what about your colleague, right? Like, can't you share and, and, and discuss things and grow together, right? You may be able to pull each other up as you climb the jungle gym. So I feel like, again, we need to be a little bit more creative. We always tend to think that we have to look upward um, when there are other folks right next to us that can, can, we can learn from as well. So. No, I, I, I love what both of you are saying, um, looking both up as well as across seeing, um, and then the people who I feel like have been most impactful on my career are people that if I have a thought at 2 a.m., I will pick up my phone and text, right? It's that real relationship. Like I made the joke um, to, I don't know if anyone knows Jennifer Santiago. She's part of SANS. She's just kiss, an amazing human. But Everybody um, knows Jennifer. <laughs> as they should. And if they don't, find her right now connect do it her. do it but i sent her a message when i got a request for this talk i was like jen are you ever like oh no not stephanie again <laughs> because i see her so much but she's an amazing advocate and amazing sponsor and also just cares actually one of the last time, times i saw her um she gave me a book called right within healing from racial Tra- healing from racial trauma in the workplace to say hey i see you hey i care and i'm invested in you as a person Lauren recommended this necklace. See, she does cyber and, and yes. fashion. <laughs> Those cyber are the and fashion. <laughs> well, there's a lot of chatter in the comments, folks. And as much as we are looking within our workplace or some colleagues that do become friends, someone asked, what do you recommend when there's a toxic environment? And people, and even if people who are minorities, female leaders, et cetera, they're just not an ally to you? What should we do? And what is that action that we could do? 
uh, not looking for any other mentors or support right now. What could we do as we navigate through that toxic environment? Um, I think that's an action for all of us to learn uh, and think about. What do you think, everyone? People are probably not going to like my answer, but uh, honestly, honest, <laughs> honest to the universe, and I've gone through this so many times, you need to leave. Um, and I know that sounds kind of black and white. Um, when, I, when I say you need to leave, what I mean is you need to set up a plan for yourself to get out of that toxic environment uh, or toxic situation. Life is too short to be haggling with toxicity. If you've tried, you've done your due diligence, you cannot make it work. You have no allies. You have no mentors. People are, uh, you know, trying to like gunning against you. It may, it may be that that's just not your place. And it may be that, you know, that door is going to close so that the, re the, the real opportunity can open for you. Um, don't overthink it, right? It's, it's not that serious. Like, it's, it's not going to be the end of your life or your career. Pack up your stuff and get the hell out, right? Strategically, of course, do what you have to do. But don't continue to make it, like, try to work. I think a lot of times I hear advice, well, like, go to HR, you know, try to make it work and all that stuff. And I've done all that. And all it does is add, it, it's just like more suffering. Um, it, you know, you know, when your time has expired at a certain position company or whatever the case may be. So if you can't move laterally, like if you can't move to another department, another team, update your resume, update your LinkedIn, turn on that interesting, you know, that little banner thing. If you cannot do that, reach out to your friends right and see what's out there but the best advice is just to leave christina you just like gave 10 answers in one i feel like if anyone is watching this and needs to go ahead and play it back she gave you like action items to reach out to your network try to move laterally update your resume see what else you can do um and then i also appreciate the taking care of yourself one of the things that i've been recently thinking about is reciprocity i'm often told um that with the person I am, with the values that I have, that I make spaces better. I make X organization better. I make whatever better. But even though something that I might be good for that organization, I'm starting to ask the question, but is that good for me? Is it going to do me harm by being there and by being present? Um, and I've been looking at more of that reciprocity to figure out where I want to land, where I want to be, and who I genuinely want to associate with. I also think that it's not on those who are oppressed to break their own oppression. Um, it's difficult, like, if that makes sense. There's, there's Or actually, educate, too. Let's just chime in a little bit. Yeah. Where if people are happy, like, I, I feel like um, if you're not a part of conversations about social movements, wherever you are, it's not because they're not going on. It's because for whatever reason, those people do not deem you as a safe space. And so if you're listening and you're someone out here who wants to be an ally, trying to figure out what it is about um, whatever you're putting out or maybe the way that they made way that you're thinking um, and to reflect on maybe some internalized biases we have so we can be better and so we can be more supportive. But in the end, it is OK for a practitioner who is part of his, a historically excluded group to leave if that's what's best for them. I don't hate it, Christina. I don't hate it at all. I don't even have anything to say. You guys just covered it all 100%. Yep. What they said. And, um, you know, I think, Steph, you mentioned the Share the Mic in Cyber Fellowship. So folks who are not in the, not in the best place professionally, there's a something called the New America Fellowship. I think, Christina, Steph, you can speak about that more. What would you like to, what would you like our audience to know about it? Just to do a little uh, marketing plugs here. So it's, I, oh my God, I'm so excited about this fellowship. I actually was interviewing someone for this today. Um, I'm, I'm also a fellow on, on this. So I'm super excited to, 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 to see all the like tidbits and behind the scenes and how this program is coming together. And, um, you know, shout out again to the folks at New America, to Lauren, to Peter, um, to Bridget Chen, who's been fantastic and to all of the, the potential fellows. But really what the fellowship is, is an extension of the campaign, right? The fellowship is, um, uh, is going to allow for opportunities for professional development, uh, to 
further the career of folks in cybersecurity. So it's op it was open to, it's, the application has not closed, but it was open to folks that are new in cyber or that are um, cyber practitioners uh, who want to either work on a research project or an impact project, right? And so that's all in the works now. And we will see more of what that's going to look like over the course of the next nine months, which I'm super excited about. Um, but it's it's amazing how it's taking shape. What I will say is, if you didn't get a chance to apply for this cohort, definitely keep your eye out for next you know next year, and we'll be uh, we'll be sure to like share, tweet, LinkedIn, and all that when the next cohort opens, um, so that you can apply if you didn't get a chance to. But yeah, it's super exciting. And by the way, it's a paid fellowship, which is super important because we cannot do any free stuff anymore. It depends. There are exceptions, but. Um, it's uh, I, I I rarely see paid fellowships, and this one is uh, a paid one, and it's a nice stipend. So, yeah. And I will also add in terms of plugs. So, share the mic in cyber, and R Street also partnered uh, to develop uh, the cyber base. Uh, uh, and that is another great like sort of networking opportunity. A lot of people are thinking about it as like, this is where all of the like, you know, highest level experts are, but it's not, it's, it's a, it's a network for black cybersecurity professionals to connect with each other and with the broader world to tell them, you know, uh, I'm here, I'm ready to talk cyber. I'm interested in connecting on X, Y, and Z issue. And you can sort of pick your issues and you can pick uh, who you want to talk to if it's the press or if it's other policy people, if it's the government, et cetera. Um, and so that's another way that, you know, if you want to get involved, but you miss the fellowship and if you want to talk to these, these people and build your um, build your sort of group of friends and network and, and network um, uh, sign yourself up for the cyber base um, we you know uh, we've worked Camille Lauren Caitlin and I work together to to start this and um, uh, and it's 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 a great opportunity and if you have friends like Steph you know someone will just drop it into your inbox or stay subscribed to all of our list and share the Mike and Cyber group on LinkedIn. You'll see some info info there. Um, I'm going to move into talk to Tiana a little bit more about what does sharing the mic mean to you in your everyday life? So what does that look like? How do you do it? And uh, I'd love to hear more about what you're doing in your new role too. Sure. So, um, you know, I come at it from a policy perspective because I'm a policy person. So for me, you know, what I'm trying to do is get cyber workforce policies that are diversity minded and inclusion minded into our national discussion, um, into the policy discussions at, at Google um, as a, you know, as I start to do workforce there as well. Um, but it means, you know, thinking about for example, what universities were funding or, you know, if you're the government, if you're starting a program, you know, one of my big pushes was to always include not just the top 20, top 50 universities, but universities that are across the country that are at, um, uh, that are at HBCUs, that are at HSIs, that have uh, a more diverse set of, uh, of people. So, you know, trying to get them more involved into the, the policy space, into the cyberspace. Um, I also came, like, sort of personally, what I, what I uh, had the opportunity to do in my last role, I had the opportunity to hire. And when I did that, you know, one of the first things I did was reach out to share the share the mic community was to reach out to the people on uh, the cyber base was uh, to think about what otherwise excluded groups could I reach out to and how could I talk to them and encourage them to apply and 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 get them onto my team. Uh, in fact, the person I ended up hiring for my deputy uh, director position, Ayan Islam, came from CISA and is an amazing, uh, uh, an amazing leader who uh, has worked a lot in the cybersecurity uh, space, but um, but was, I think, um, 
I, I over overshadowed almost at CISA. And I was eager to talk to her and see all her ideas that she had for, uh, for cybersecurity. And uh, I wanted to give her that platform to talk to uh, the policy community. And um, so, you know, in my everyday life, that's sort of, that's how I try to do it. But obviously I participate and share the mic. Um, in fact, I'm, today I'm partnered with Renisha Jones, who's awesome and uh, who has taken over me today. Uh, and so it's it's exciting. And Christina and or to Steph, whoever wants to answer first, what how can allies help the most? We have uh, you know making sure to hire and making sure to source your candidates from uh, from Share the Mic and other organizations. What else should we uh, should allies hear today in terms of taking action? I think allies can also pass the mic, right? Um, so Tatiana, that's amazing that you're. Uh, partner gets to take over you for today. Um, I think that's really that's really cool. But I think in terms of like opportunities, you know, there are times where you know we we still encounter situations where like five out of the five panelists are still the same type of panelists, right? So like change it up a little bit, right? Like if you know that you have an amazing mentee or just amazing friend, right, or someone that you kind of help guide. Um, maybe they're interested in speaking. Maybe they can be on a panel, right? Um, I tried to do that today, by the way. I was like, can I share the mic? You know, I'm always on stuff. Uh, but just kind of think about, I guess, think about others before you think about yourself, um, especially with like paid opportunities. Uh, maybe share it, share it with someone in your network and and um, that you have a good relationship with and say, hey, would you want to do this? It's a good opportunity for you to be visible. Um, it, it, you know, it, it includes a stipend. Um, but then also, you know, think about these people when you're in these rooms, right? If you're in these rooms and they say, we're hiring a new analyst, we're looking for entry level, think about who in your network could be a part of that. Who can you pull in, right? Um, so I think those things may sound very small, but they really do make a big difference. Um, and they could potentially impact someone's life, right? And, and the, the someone's family. Um, so I say, sometimes you got to give it up. Right. It's going to have to hurt you. a little. It may hurt you a little bit. Right. You got to you got to give it up. Uh, you can't take everything for yourself. And I think that that has been the case. I continue today to see um, the same white, you know, uh, white female or women, men and non-binary folks um, on these panels. Like, again, like especially now that we have, you know, cyber base, like you have an entire listing of of diverse folks that are open to speaking. Um, it just shows me like laziness and that you're not trying. So all I ask is that you try um, and just give it a little bit of effort. We're here, we're out here. Um, and if you can't find us, um, talk to any of us. We'll, we'll point you in the right direction, so. We're and out here quickly. and been here, right? Go ahead, yeah. Tatiana. Oh, just real quickly. And if you're an organization or you work in an organization that hasn't yet signed the Making Space Pledge in cyber, you should do that because it, it commits your organization to always including a woman or person of color on your panels, events, and conferences. And that's the least uh, organizations can do at this point. Yep. Christina, I love what you said about um, not like like sharing platforms. I actually, um, <laughs> I actually took an interview this year to tell the person who to go hire. Um, and they were like, and they and I, I was told, Stephanie, you do not take a take an interview to interview for me to for me to hire someone else. I went, yes, I did, because this person is amazing. And I vouch for them and they will need a break. And so I, I'm so happy that 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 Jenny ended up with this fantastic organization. And we also talk about like how to best support her. Um, and so not only like looking at like our allies platforms, but our platforms and what we can do to help pull people up. Because like, I don't want to be up here alone. I want to be up here with them other amazing people, right? Mm -hmm. One of the other things that I think that our allies can do um, is to be my voice when I'm not in the room. Be the voice of others when they are not in the room. Because if you look around and you see that people are not in the room, it doesn't happen by accident. We all have a lot of unconscious biases. We're told that who should be in what positions and that these affect how we move every day. And I guarantee that we have enough research and also anecdotal evidence to know that the conversations differ per the makeup. My allies are going to hear things that people will not say in front of me because of who I am. And so when that happens, speak up, push back, ask that person why they think that is um, appropriate. And then also look around to see who's not in this room and who should be. Because you're, if you're in a room that's monolithic, it didn't happen on accident. 
there's either invisible barriers or invisible on-ramps that people do not know and ask what you can do to actively change it. Up, oh, Beatrice, I think you're still on mute. The most said words on the yes, last love it. Years. No, it's not, it's not a session without someone doing that. And I love doing it. Got to claim it. Uh, we have some uh, we have some questions coming in from the chat. First, about the fellowship. One, um, when does the fellowship open again for new applicants? And two, have they already been awarded for this cohort? Um, tell who wants to go. So they they have not been awarded yet. That's actually in progress, um, and hopefully we should start seeing who. Uh, who will be awarded within the next couple of weeks. So, you know, the team is hard at work there. Uh, this fellowship is nine months long. Um, so uh, we're probably looking at sometime next year to reopen the application, but we don't have specific dates yet. But, you know, I'm happy to share that um, through all the social media channels once we do have more information. Awesome. Thank you, Christina. And um, this is up for Tatiana. Can you share more about the pledge you mentioned earlier? Sure. Um, so it's makingspacepledge.org and it's uh, open to anyone. There's over a hundred organizations that have signed up and, and probably over 50 or hundred individuals. Um, the, the pledge is very simple. It's just sign your organization up to always uh, include a woman or a person of color on any event conference or, um, uh, or panel that you host as an organization. Uh, it's, it's not that high a bar. And quite honestly, most organizations say that they pass it, but still we're, you know, you, you see plenty of, plenty of panels that are all white men, uh, or you'll see, you know, the same people, Christina, to your point on those panels and events. And so, you know, uh, the cyber base effort is, uh, in coordination with that making space pledge, because we heard a lot that, uh, well, you know, we'd love to sign it, but I wouldn't know where to find the people. And so that's why I try. That's why we we try to start the the cyber base so that people wouldn't have that excuse anymore. So if you're interested, go to makingspacepledge.org, and um, and make the commitment if you can on behalf of your organization. Or um, I've I've talked to a lot of people who have just raised it up to the leadership and decision making uh, bodies within their organizations if it's a larger organization. And a lot of people are willing to do it. And quite honestly, it's a um, you know it's it's a great a great thing for an organization to do. And back to Christina's point, we are here, we've been here, no excuses, right? Um, all right, I think we're good on questions for now um, from the chat. And then just going back to our panel here, we've we've said it like, we, we know we see the same type of folks. We Some people will call it a mantle for, or, other types of deviations there. Um, what what conferences or what speaking engagements have you seen that is just like, hey, you know what? Some of these places, I'm not seeing what I wanna see, but these conferences are. Do you have any suggestions for the folks listening in on where to start tuning into? I mean, I'm just going to call out and say, we mentioned Jennifer Santiago earlier. She is, I believe, the director of um, content for SANS's conferences. She is very intentional. She is an ally. And um, SANS does great work for my, like, I've, I've worked with them personally. This, this is just me speaking from my experience. Um, I feel like I have a very strong partnership and support in SANS because they are dedicated to not only making the space, but continued support for, um, for others. Um, that we don't often see in these fields. And it makes, in my opinion, a huge difference. I think that they do an excellent job. Mary Galloway's uh, Women's Society of Cyber Jitsu has a great conference um, and is always inclusive and very diverse. Um, uh, I'd also say ICS Village uh, has the Hacking, Hacking the Capital event every May 4th. And um, Bryson Board, who runs that, is a great ally and is always uh, and runs a, a track that's specifically for first time speakers or diverse speakers so that they can get more experience and, and get out there more on the stage. So I, you know, plus plus one to both of those conferences. 
I, I'll also add, um, I had a great experience this year. I was on the CFP board for um, uh, Enigma Conf, uh, which will happen in January in San Francisco. And I feel like that process was super intentional, uh, not only with including folks like me and other, you know, diverse folks, but also just in the entire CFP process um, so that, you know, to eliminate any type of bias. So that was fantastic. Um, I hope I get to go as well because it, it was a great process. And then also, uh, in addition to SANS and Enigma, I would say, and Women's Cyber Jitsu, I would also say I had a really great experience at ShmooCon uh, last year or this this year, actually, this past January. Uh, it was March, March, maybe. I don't know. It was it was really great. I think, the, the you know, the floor was great. I don't know what their CF, CFP process is like if you want to be a speaker. But I know that I it was my first conference, um, you know, post pandemic that I had gone to again after being kind of like hidden away. And I had a really great time. I had a really great experience. Everyone was very nice, very welcoming, super safe. And um, I, I really loved it. So I would recommend it. I don't know if it's like that all the time, but I had a great experience and I did not feel uncomfortable at all. So that's one you can look into. Awesome. Uh, plug for anyone else who's in an organization with a big cybersecurity, either team or cyber curious uh, employee population. PayPal does an internal conference and it just started off with, let's just show off what we're doing and create a demand for what is cyber? What is our cybersecurity doing? But also, who is doing it? And it creates a visibility of it's not just our CISO who's speaking out, you know, in a to the to the undisclosed listserv. It is all of us. It is our X amount of people working globally to help protect, secure, or to innovate. And if you have, if you're in an organization, start it. It could just be an easy lunch and learn. It could be a coffee chat with you and someone else, and start sharing that because. You can create that just from just from starting a Teams meeting or a Zoom meeting. So you don't have to wait also to kind of like Christina's point. You have all of these conferences that you can you can attend and submit, but you can also do it yourself and do it in terms of I want to create a safer space or a less toxic space, or I just want to share what we're doing here. And also if it's for folks who look like us, even better. So I want to add that little encouragement um, if you can. All right, we're, folks, an hour goes by quickly. We're in our last few minutes here. I just wanna go around the around the room. What, do you have any closing thoughts or is there anything else you'd like folks to know about you or know about what, what we're all about here and share the mic? I can jump in. I am, um, when I think about social justice movements, um, and human dignity. Um, I think that one, that there are, that everyone has the right to be treated as a person and have the right to thrive. Um, and we all have been acculturated to biases. There's a lot of research in the social science talking about all these images and all these messages that we often hold without knowing and that these biases run deep. Um, little kids in America, I'm talking about three, four, five, can tell you who is good or who is bad or who is smart or who is dumb based upon skin color of dolls that they are presented. That's how deep these messages run um, and that we're on an imperfect journey. And I don't want people to walk away feeling disempowered. I think that if you care, that you can listen and you can learn and you can find ways to act that not only impact the broader world, but also, um, but also your personal world. And as long as you are here and you are trying um, and you are trying to improve because we'll, we're all going to make mistakes. So have grace, take that feedback when it comes your way to say, you know what, I did mess up. Let me pivot and learn. Um, I honestly think that is what's going to make the world a better place. But also you only have to prove something to yourself and not to anyone else. Um, so I, I think I would I would say if there's one message is that you know, prioritize self care and prioritize yourself. You don't have to do all the things. You don't have to speak at panels. You don't have to write blog posts. You don't have to do all these things that everybody is telling you in this industry that you have to do just to be successful. It's okay for you to shut down and say I'm out of office for Q3. Like I'm disconnecting. I'm unplugging. 
that's okay. You'll come back refreshed. You'll come back more powerful. Don't run yourself ragged because like everybody is doing it. So um, I would say number one, prioritize self-care because if not, you will burn out. It's a guaranteed 100% and you don't want to get to that point. Um, you know, don't ask me how I know. So number one. And yeah, and then like, don't listen to haters, like whatever. Like there's going to be people that are just like, going to... The, the the fabric of this country is everything that Stephanie just mentioned. That's not going away unless we rip it to shreds and start all over again. That's not going to happen, right? So we have to understand how to operate under these constructs and how to navigate this game, right? That's where you are going to succeed. So part of that is not spending your time engaging in topics and conversations that are, are of, of no benefit to you right? Like, again, time is limited. We don't have a lot of time here. We got a lot of things to do. Don't waste your time on conversations or trying to convince or change anybody's mind. Focus on what you have to do. Make a plan, right? If that plan is work nine to five and at six o'clock, lay on my couch, that's the plan, right? Like, that's what I need to do to be good. Um, and I, I guarantee you, you will be successful. Yeah. Like, you know, you will be successful because you have to define your own success. And that's, that's the name of the game. Yeah. So self-care, number one, know how to play the game within these constructs and these limitations and you define success and work around that and remind yourself all the time. And that's, that's all I have to say. Yeah. Um, I, I'll just add that, you know, wherever you're coming from, like if you're coming from a computer science program, great. If you're coming from a community college, great. If you're coming from a uh, theater and you've decided that you like cyber now, cool. Like uh, don't discount how your particular experience can help in the protection of our nation and our critical infrastructure. Um, because you you never know what your unique perspective can bring to the conversation that no one else had thought of. Uh, or a question that you might ask uh, can, can have, uh, you know, in, incredible impact on a policy that a company or an agency takes. So, you know, sort of just don't discount your experiences or, or what, how you can help. Um, every perspective is important. It's not just computer science and coding. It's policy and marketing and uh, writing and, uh, you know, every other sort of, um, every other perspective that plays a game, it plays a part in cyber. Um, and I'm going to have to disagree with you, Christina, a little bit, because I don't think I will ever stop trying to change people's minds on why it's important that uh, more diverse voices need to be in cyber. Um, I, I to be fair, I'm just sort of messing with it. I don't think you were saying that, but I think I um, I do try to change people's minds um, all the time. Uh, I I think it's important to just be you and and uh, not try to live for anyone else. Uh, but I, I do try to change uh, people's perspectives to come around to sort of my way of thinking that like the cyber workforce is a is a possibly our number one most critical issue in uh, in cyber and that um, getting more people, uh, more diverse people into cyber is uh, is is the one of the most important things we can do. So um, I think, you know, I'm very glad I'm very glad we're having this discussion. Um, happy to see all of you on this um, on this LinkedIn live. And, and I hope that you all can um, can connect with us and uh, make more friends here and and stay connected so that we can change the world. Tatiana, one thing I'll mention is that as long as it's healthy conversation and productive conversation, yeah. that's always welcomed. You know, what I mean is as a as a person who identifies as, you know, Black and also Caribbean, I am not going to argue with you oh, about yeah. something that, right? Like about right. racism or oh, something yeah. like that because it's like not productive. But those people you just leave. Yeah. Just leave. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Just, they're just noise. You oh, kill them with kindness. I don't mean to, you know, don't be rude. You kill them with kindness, but you, okay, that's it. Goodbye. Right. Yeah. Uh, because you don't want it to, to, to affect your mental health. And I don't think it's worth it in the end, but I think healthy, productive conversations to your point, Tatiana, are always welcome and should always be. Absolutely. Welcome, right? 100%. Yeah. We love to hear it. Don't deal with jerks. Exactly. No That's jerks right. allowed. Yeah. My like, listen. If my allies want to go ahead and deal with that, beautiful. I have Perfect. enough to lift, and I will thank them for it. <laughs> I'll close with uh, with my thought. I struggle with this as well. 
self-care is necessary, but also that voice that we tell ourselves is often the harshest critic. So be careful on how you talk and talk to yourself because everyone else is, could be praising you and you're not hearing it because you're so harsh on yourself. So that's one thing that in terms of self-care, make sure you are speaking to yourself in the same type of way that you tell a friend. Um, in our last minute, I wanna say thank you, thank you, thank you to not only the organizers, thank you, Sans, thank you, Share the Mic and Cyber founders and organizing team, and thank you, panelists, for jumping on today, sharing your, sharing your thoughts and sharing the mic with each other. Um, I think everyone has our Twitter handles, find us on LinkedIn, Anything else that we'd we'd like to share? Uh, you have 30 seconds. Yes, follow the share the mic and cyber hashtag today all day. Retweet, re share, connect with the participants and jump into the conversation. Get involved. Literally get involved. Um, listening and learning, learning is important, but it needs to be matched with action. And if you missed it this year, do it next year. There's never a too late a time to start. All right. And thank you again, folks. We'll see you on the socials. And definitely give us a follow. Chat soon, everyone. Thank you. Bye.